thought that's a lot of hubris. When Dr. Jendaya Fraser <laughs> got her PhD <laughs> in political Frankly, science at Stanford University, her journey as a teacher at various universities began. She felt that being an academic was a very honorable profession, as she had grown up in a family that constantly reminded her that education is power. My mother would always say that if you learn, no one can take away your brain. No one can take away your thoughts. They can take many material things from you. But if you have an education, um, you will always essentially be free. Education is a path to freedom. From a young age, Dr. Jendai knew she loved to learn and also loved libraries and universities. But up until she graduated from college, she had thought she would be a lawyer, which she later found out was a lot of paperwork. A professor she knew then guided her into becoming an academic. She believes that having a mentor helps you to avoid mistakes. Mentorship is about building on somebody else's experience and learning from it instead of having to go through everything. Often people will come up and say, can you be my mentor? Uh, but really, that person has to have a vested interest in you, and you have to have um, an interest in them. With her father in the military, the family moved about quite a lot. She went to high school in Germany and to college in California. Growing up, there were the little but visible markings of discrimination. Our parents were telling us to be very aware that we would be followed around the stores, you know, because some of the clerks would think that you might be stealing something. A guidance counselor will tell you to maybe take lower level classes or you're not going to, you know, they, they have less aspirations for your life. But, you know, I come from a family that expected that and countered that by telling me I could do anything I wanted to do in life. While there has been a significant improvement, Dr. Jendai believes the issue of race might be one the United States just might never reconcile. At 54, she says she is in the third quarter of her life and expects to live very long. For her, this means she has to give extra thought about how she will spend the last of her working years before going into retirement. You know, start saving now to make sure that you can, you know, take care of yourself into the future. You know, you have to keep your mind active, continue to read. Uh, don't think of yourself as old. She was instrumental in the decisions that established President George Bush's administration's signature initiatives, which included the $15 billion President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFA. If tomorrow I passed away, I would have lived a good life, and I feel that PEPFA is part of that. And what I'm so proud of is that we did something boldly and big, and we did it in cooperation with you know, the citizens and the leadership, especially of Africa. She says that while the fight against HIV has been effective in many ways, the dangers are still lacking. The effectiveness of the drugs have, in some ways, stopped people from being so concerned about dying that they don't deal with the prevention side. You know, and so there's an unintended consequence um, in many ways that the drugs can prolong your life, and so it can possibly lead to, you know, um, irresponsible uh, behavior. Dr. Fraser got to interact with President Museveni and many other African leaders while she was still serving in the United States government. She was then working as President Bush's special assistant on African affairs. Our conversation shifts to African leaders on why they stay too long in power and the politics of elections. And I think that the r rapidity of these elections, the cost of the elections, and to the degree to which societies are pitted against each other is not healthy. Right. So that's the first thing. I even think it's not healthy in the United States. You know, every four years, within three years of a president, he's now have to turn his attention to being reelected. You know, and society is pitted against each other. So I think that's not healthy. On the other hand, I think that it's important to for leaders to groom successors. Early this year, Dr. Fraser accused the International Criminal Court of unfairly targeting African leaders. She says the ICC is often influenced by the stronger countries. There's no ICC in Tibet. You know, there's no ICC in Chechnya. There's no ICC in Afghanistan or Iraq or many of these other places because there are these countries that won't allow the ICC to take up such cases. But yet they're just all over Africa. So, you know, when France says, well, go into Cote d'Ivoire or, you know, the United States says come into Uganda against uh, Joseph Kony or you know, the Belgians or, you know, French say go into Congo against Bemba, well, there you are. Um, or, you know, the French say go into Sudan, you know, against Bashir. And so my point isn't that these, some of these 
individuals, you know, especially these rebels in Congo and other places, don't deserve to be judged and held accountable um, for their atrocities. My point is the International Criminal Court is not an international criminal court. You know, it's a court of Western powers um, against, you know, people who have less power to withstand it. And so it's not justice. You know, it's geopolitics by other means. Dr. Fraser would not mind seeing the U.S. have its first female president. And from her observation, it doesn't seem like a very far off thought. From the Democratic side, at least, it seems that Hillary Clinton has a clear path to be the Democratic candidate. Um, and she's a formidable uh, politician. You know, she's got significant government uh, experience, you know, as Secretary of State, as uh, a senator of the United States, and certainly even as the First Lady. That brings tremendous experience as well. And so I think she's going to be a strong, strong candidate for the Democratic. Dr. Jendai Fraser is the managing partner of Africa Exchange Holdings Limited, a private sector initiative to build Africa's equity and commodity markets. She serves as chairman of the board of the East African Exchange Limited, which is based in Kigali, Rwanda. Dr. Fraser became the first female U.S. ambassador to South Africa in June 2004. Before that appointment, she served as the U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for African Affairs. She was also senior director for African Affairs at the U.S. National Security Council. Josephine Karunji, NTV.